Looking back at all the years of the Shrek films, what's been one of your favorite moments throughout the past 10 years? When Jeffrey uh, said, uh, would you like to be in an uh, animated movie, I said, yes. He said it was called Shrek. I said, that's the worst title I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and I didn't know what it was going to be. And then in the process, the first time I saw it with an audience and the line, uh, but you are beautiful to me, got a gasp from the crowd who were so into the whole romance and the whole heart of it that I, I just was blown away that an animated movie could move people and that it, it was something that people would be invested in emotionally. And I think that's been the most satisfying thing for me. Eddie, what's been the secret to success for Shrek? I, I think it's really funny and very well made. <laughs> Hold on, I just went on for 15 minutes. <laughs> well said. God, I wish I had done that. <laughs> I really do think it's that simple. It's really well made and uh, it's, it's very funny and it's smart and those things add up to hits sometimes. And Kevin, we talked about when you were on Idol, the emotion in this one. It, it goes back to the roots of mm. the beginning a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think that since you get to see true love happen all over, again for the first time between Shrek and Fiona because they get to find one another. Um, it's that, it's the moment that you're talking mm -hmm. about, your favorite moment from the first movie that you get to experience all over again because we get to take the journey with them of finding that love again. It's not that you, you know, you open up on the two of them sort of in routine of a life that they've taken for granted or F Shrek has for, for sure. And then you get to see him journey back through trying to get, regain and find his, his true love. And that ultimately is it's just a, a beautiful, lovely story and you get to fall in love with Shrek and Fiona all over again. Antonio, how much fun have you had making these movies? A lot, actually, and unexpected. Because I, I came to this country without speaking the language, the fact that they called me just for the use of my voice was very, very surprising. Fun every time that I have been actually on, on uh, recording sessions and uh, I still do have a lot of fun. And also, you, you asked before uh, about memories. I, I remember uh, when we opened uh, in the Cannes Film Festival that is happening right now, and you see the whole entire intellectuality of Europe in a movie theater, interrupting the movie with applauses uh, for 12 times. It was kind of... Uh, Stunning to me, you know, and beautiful uh, moments uh, that we have had in promotion all around the world, the whole entire team. Mm -hmm. The four movies of Shrek actually, <laughs> sometimes even playing against uh, pop culture, became pop culture itself. That's what it is now. I mean, I was in, uh, in New York this year watching the, the parade from my house of uh, Thanksgiving parade, and here it was Shrek, a big balloon just crossing in front of my window and behind him was Mickey Mouse, so he's part of American pop culture right now. Um, so I think it, it set up, a, 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 you know, it was beautiful, you know, what he has done in these 10 years of working. I remember a couple of times uh, a woman came to me once in a supermarket with, uh, you know, a little kid who was like five years old and and, and she said to him, look, look, this is Puss in Boots. This is Puss in Boots. Can't you do the voice? And the kid just looked at me and looked at the mother and said, I don't know Puss in Boots, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Zorro. And I, <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> so what do, I, what do you do in that circumstance? You, know, you don't know what to do with the kid. <laughs> what about you, Eddie? <laughs> I've had people come up and do lines from the movie to me. The only time I'll do that voice of that donkey is I could do a, a, a shadow puppet of that donkey. So if I'm watching <laughs> movies at home on the screen and the movie's not good, I'll have the donkey come up and do commentary. You can't get that, that. Oh, oh, that's great. Yeah. Like, he'd be like, this movie ain't. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I have a master.
faster than the home theater. I can do it. <laughs> Sometimes I take the Shrek ears, the little green ones, and I have this shadow of me and Shrek. And it, 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 I've had some wild times in the house. <laughs> I've had parents come up and go, you know who this is? This is Princess Fiona. And kids are like, <laughs> like literally like tears, you know? And I, and I always say, I, I tell people, no, I try to stop them before they, you know, they tell them because I, as, as a kid, you believe that the, the characters that you're watching, that you're, you know, you fall like, in love with them and you want to believe that they're real. I've called kids that have the measles, a couple of, like, or are sick, and I'm always shocked by how incredibly accepting they are that Shrek is calling them. You know? <laughs> so it's like, ah, oh, Shrek, good. Anyways, here's my idea. I'm like, isn't this a little extraordinary? <laughs> And so that's the part that always kills me. It's like, can you put the tooth fairy on now? <laughs> yeah, I'll go get the tooth fairy. You know, for me, Fiona's always been a warrior. You know, she, I've always seen her as that. She's been a warrior of love her whole, you know, through all of these films. What she's worked for, what she's fought for is the is the love that she, she has for herself and the love that she has for Shrek and her family and her friends. And so she's always been a warrior. It's just in a different tone for this film. Um, and she, her responsibilities are a little bit ob more obvious as far as you know, the, the resistance. But you know, she's always been a, a warrior to me. And that is part of her nature. And it has given her all the things in her life that she values. You know, I never thought that I would get cast. Uh, and I thought if I did, I'd have to do things like this, so I was freaked out. Uh, I never thought I would. But of course, you know, I would like to, to be part of this like, amazing talent, so. Walt did most of the voices yeah. for, for all of us, I think, yeah. And he's, I, I don't know how good of a Fiona he does, but. Uh, <laughs> <Mike. good>. Yeah. <laughs> we shared some moments, eye he's to eye. He's not as pretty as you are. <laughs> Go to all my accent. How but, do you do my accent? Actually, I did, uh, you know, in Scratch, I played you a lot, so. Uh, do it. Do it. it. Right now? <laughs> uh, uh, feed me if you dare. <laughs> I was so happy when I heard it was him because he's brilliant at it. If somebody else came in and did it, I don't think it would have it would have had the same resonance as as Walt doing it. It's his character, you know? I didn't realize he had done it until I saw the movie all cut together, and I was like, ooh, it's doing Rumpelstiltskin. That's <laughs> Walt. I was really, I was blown away by it. John, how did you get the role of Brogan? I don't know why, why the character I play on TV would necessarily lend itself to be uh, the first choice to be, uh, to be an, an animated uh, character, but uh, I honestly can't believe I'm sitting up here. They were still kind of trying to figure out what it was going to be, and was it going to be a, a, a love interest or, or a rival or something? We, we weren't really sure, and I was like, I don't, I don't care. I just want to be a part of this. I've loved this, this in the last three versions of this, and went and saw all of them in the theater like I was a you know, 13-year-old. The pure fan of me was like, I, I'll, I don't know, I'll go play something, somebody who talks backwards on top of his head and, uh, <laughs> and turns around. I don't even care. The fact that they were able to kind of work with me and, and my sort of personality and sort of create this uh, person who's sort of this uh, cheerleader of, of sorts was uh, was fun. Was fun to do. Craig was playing Cookie fun for you. I didn't know I had an ogre side, so that kind of helped out. But it was, it was a good time. We got in there with. Uh, Mike Mitchell just kept developing, playing and playing, and you know, she came out like, okay. <laughs> <laughs>